Will marijuana legalization better or worsen New York's position in the opioid crisis? According to Dr. Kevin Sabet, a vast majority of marijuana users never use other drugs, but there's a flip side to that. I have absolutely seen a connection to people starting out with marijuana or smoking marijuana and then moving on to harsher drugs such as heroin or opioids and things like that, absolutely. Syracuse City Drug Court Judge James Cecil oversees the city's drug treatment court and he says it's rare to find someone struggling with opioids that didn't start with marijuana. You've got to understand that our drug treatment court, we handle, we handle very few cases in our treatment court where people have a substance abuse problem that is just marijuana. Even so, Cecil says he's not sure he would call marijuana a gateway drug. But I think that anything that makes you impaired is going to, as I said, it's going to bring down your inhibitions and it's going to have you move on to other things possibly. Defense attorney Colin McCallan works in Denver where the plant is legal. And he doesn't believe it's a gateway drug, even though he works with clients who have drug addictions. To suggest that marijuana doesn't have any negative consequence would be too far, but let me just say I've never seen someone overdose, I've never seen someone die from it. Stanford professor Keith Humphreys agrees. I mean, death, of course, grabs our attention, understandably. And there is, to my knowledge, never been a documented overdose death from marijuana, as opposed to opioids, where there are documented overdose deaths every single day. So that is good, you know, from a public health viewpoint. But McCallan says opioids and marijuana don't cause the same level of harm. I think opioids, for one thing, are, you know, those, we're talking about a substance that is still illegal. But of course, we also know that the risks of using such a drug are far more dangerous than marijuana. When we're talking about marijuana, in the grand scheme of things, I think we're talking about a relatively safe drug, a drug that can't kill you no matter how much you smoke. Um, but, you know, certainly um, we do see those other uh, addictions to much more heavier drugs, and it, it's night and day compared to what we see with marijuana. Humphrey says sometimes the bigger problem is the number of users. I mean, that's, that's the other you know, reality is, you know, heroin is far more deadlier, but far fewer people use it. But, you know, we have tens of millions of people using marijuana, so a small amount of harm multiplied by tens of millions of people in the aggregate can actually be a fair amount of harm to a society. Which could be why NBC investigative reporter Scott McFarlane says more and more people are seeking help. There's a sharp increase in people seeking treatment because of marijuana, or at least listing that as one of the reasons they're seeking treatment. So if you need treatment for drug abuse, it's possible it's for more than one drug. It could be for opioids, it could be for cocaine, heroin, it could be for marijuana. McFarland says many people who don't have the money for treatments tend to turn to government-funded drug abuse programs. People who can't get through the day without a drug, whether it be a legal drug or an illegal drug, have to get help. And in states, New York State, California, Massachusetts, Maryland, people need the state's help. They need state funding, taxpayer-supported programs to get off drugs in many cases. People who don't have means need to use government-funded drug abuse programs. Former White House Drug Policy Advisor Kevin Sabet says there's nothing natural about today's marijuana. We're adulterating it, we're getting the THC from it in totally abnormal ways, in ways we've never done it before. We're extracting it and giving it in 99% oils that you have to put on the end of a needle and then put it in a, a device that you're going to vape. I mean, that's not natural. Humphrey says in California, legalizing the plant has caused marijuana strains to become more potent because you can hire top growers and chemists and operate out in public. That's enabled an acceleration of really, really high strength products and uh, what they do we don't really know and so far regulators have in no way constrained that surprisingly to me and I think mistakenly they've just said you know you can go as high as you want which we don't allow for any other legal drug. Sabet says that marijuana doesn't necessarily cause the use of other drugs. Federal researchers are split. The National Institute on Drug Abuse agrees with Sabet but the federal researchers point out other studies do not. Drugs, there are plenty of people who use marijuana. The vast majority of them never use other drugs, but there's a flip side to that. 98% of heroin and cocaine users use marijuana first. So researchers are looking into that mechanism. Why is that? Is there something in the brain that primes the brain to want a bigger high, to want a drug like an opiate or, or a cocaine? Um, you know, what is going on with that? I think researchers still have to look at it. So again, vast majority of marijuana users don't use other drugs, but the vast, vast majority of people who do use other drugs use marijuana first. We hope that through this series, you're better informed on what the state of New York could look like if recreational marijuana were to be legalized. 
And we want to take the time to say a big thank you from us for joining us for this series. But signing off now, I'm Alexandra Jennerjohn. And I'm Keenan Dixon, saying so long.